Welcome to our third uh, Bridge Insights chat. Um, can you just give me some feedback if you can hear me? Maybe just like show a hand for a second so I can see that you guys can hear me. Okay, that seems to be the case. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Um, I'm Dominic. I'm the business developer at Tixel. And yeah, today I'm going to take you through the next topic that we're going to speak about. After speaking about farms last week, today we're going to be talking about the reward pools. Um, I hope you guys are excited to talk about that as well. Um, as the other times as well, we're trying to have a good conversation here. If anybody wants to come on stage and have a chat, that would be great. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction of the topic and um, answer some questions from social media and um, from the groups. Um, you can write the questions into the chat if you want, or you can come on stage. If you come on stage, we will be recording the audio. So uh, just make sure that you know that you give us permission to record you if you come on stage. Um, yeah, let's get started. Okay. Um, Quick introduction. Um, you guys probably all know it already. Tixel is a German organization, has its Tixel token and the bridge token as well now. Connecting all blockchains is our goal, and the cross chain bridge is like one of our core products focused on that right now. Okay. So let's get to the reward pools. Um, what are the reward pools? So basically, the reward pools are the main way that the bridge basically gives back um, the rewards to its liquidity providers. Um, the reason why the reward pools exist is, first of all, obviously, to suck up um, a good amount of the circulating supply of the bridge token. And um, secondly, to make sure that um, with these bridge tokens you earn by providing specific assets in liquidity in the farms, um, maybe even to buying the bridge token on a DEX, you can have basically a chance to earn all kinds of different assets. So you're not basically not like in liquidity mining pools where you're limited to earning the assets you provide less liquidity. Here you have a really cool chance to earn liquid uh, to earn rewards in a different token. Like you could provide Tixel liquidity and earn USDC, or you could do it the other way around, or you could earn any of the smaller tokens that we have listed on the um, on the bridge now, and hope that these tokens um, do very well in the future because obviously a lot of them have a lot of upside potential. So. It's a really cool mechanism, we think, to kind of give people the ability to, um, yeah, earn what they want, or at least earn what the, the tokens that the bridge has available. Um, yeah, there was a lot of talk, obviously, about the thirty percent um, kind of fee, the withdrawal fee in the reward pools, and um, kind of why that is in place. So. Basically, the way the reward works is like every time somebody does a bridging, the the fee immediately goes to the reward pool, meaning that like if there would be a really, really big holder and he would have the technical capacity to basically listen to the chain, he could always, when there's like a big bridging incoming, he could just move his uh, bridge tokens to that specific pool and kind of... Um, earn all the rewards in that moment from that um from that bridging so um that, that would be kind of like called a just in time attack where somebody just provides a whole lot of tokens for that specific moment so he can farm all the um, rewards from all the other users and um that would be really bad for smaller users so because of that reason, we implemented the 30% withdrawal fee, which would make it very unlikely for that to happen because 
um, the rewards would have to be insanely huge from one bridging for um, that to make economic sense. So basically, the even though many people don't think so, the 30% fee is a way for us to protect the smaller investors in um, the reward pools. So, um, yeah, maybe some of you have some questions um, that you want to discuss with me on stage. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and um, come on stage if you want. So we have some people here. Give me one second. Um, Lock you. Yes, that's how you pronounce that. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, lock you. How are you doing? Hey. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think oh, so. Okay, thank you. Um, so with the reward pools, um, currently you're displaying the average over the past seven days on the the, um, uh, the percent returns. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you plan on uh, giving a little, a little bit better of a dashboard view of uh, not just the last seven days, but at, you know, a per day or some sort of graph sort of show uh, that if it, you know, if, if there was one big spike of trade in and there hasn't been anything since, you're not going to be getting uh, any rewards out of that pool um, versus if there's regular small transfers, um, then you can sort of expect that to continue. Um, any sort of plans to sort of surface that information a little bit better? Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, that would be, that's kind of hard though, because like, let's say I, we, instead of like doing the APR based on every seven days, we would base the APR on every day, mm -hmm. which would now mean that the APR would like basically fluctuate a lot mm -hmm. more, right? Um, so we go up, down, up, down, up, down. I actually think that like a seven day period is like a quite good kind of period to, to, to have like a middle number um here because i mean obviously like bridge volume is a lot more volatile for example dex volume is at this point in time because um dex trades happen kind of a lot more frequently um than like bridging um volumes which is something that more is based on like current demand of something maybe into a network out of a network um so yeah and also, like I mean, with the with the thirty percent withdrawal fee, the the reward pools they they're not really made for you to go out like in a week or two. If you if you go in and out within a week, you're probably gonna lose money on that, right? So yeah. you probably are better off to being in that pool for at least a month, or two, or three, or maybe even a year. So um, I I, I don't think that like displaying an even shorter kind of weighted APR yeah. would actually do any good to users i think i wasn't clear about my about what i was asking um i wasn't asking that you I, the seven day apr makes total sense um i was asking if, the, if you guys planned on surfacing any more statistics for being able to see so with that 30 percent, oh, you mean kind um, of like an explorer kind of something like that uh, explore so what the issue is is like so um take the dax uh coin dragon X. yeah um, you know, insane returns according to the APR. However, those are those were because of a massive yeah. um over the bridge. Yeah. Um, and being able to see, you know, even in the past, you know, a graph of even the past month of transfers would allow you to see before you put the money in. Um, you know, is this something that is is this some is this something where the APR was obviously thrown off, um, or yeah. is this something that is regularly generating returns. That, that, that was more what I was getting at, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that would be something like an explorer, right? Something that would show all the transactions on different chains and then make them kind of visible. Um, I mean, we already have, I don't know if you've seen that, but we already have the, the kind of dashboard now that you can check. Yep. Um, I did. 
So yeah, that would be like right now, that would kind of be the way to maybe do that to just check for the volume of a certain token over like the past weeks or months or whatever. Um, it's definitely on our list to like make something that is like more granular where you can do a little more analysis. But um, I, I, that's probably going to take a little bit longer to have that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, what you can also always do is you could like check on the chain yourself, but that's obviously, <laughs> that's uh, not a very like user friendly way of doing that because obviously all these events are in the contracts, right? And on chain. Yeah. Um, but we don't have a very good, like, let's say user friendly, um, way of doing that yet besides the dashboard. So yeah, I guess okay, that's and, my answer yeah. to that question right now. Awesome. That that totally answers my question. And the dashboard was really helpful, especially since uh, you can remix it and customize it. So yeah, um, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks for being on here. Okay, we have one more person here. Let me see. I see. Mm. I see. Do you still want to come on or? Is it not working? Ah, oh, there I, you are. <laughs> I didn't know that I had to click accept. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. all good. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't have such a deep question. Something I've noticed over the past few weeks. Um, the price of bridge that is being shown on the cross chain website is heavily, uh, it's like way more than it's, it is on the exchanges. Hmm. Like I've okay. noticed there is a discrepancy of about 40 to 50%. It's getting worse the past few days. And I've just been wondering, like I haven't found anything about it, neither in the docs nor anywhere. So I'm just wondering where does this insane discrepancy come from? Like hmm. I'm talking 50% right now. Like okay. I just checked a few minutes ago. That's interesting. I don't have a, I don't have a concrete answer to that right now. Uh, I, I would assume that the the way that the pricing is sourced is also like a like kind of an average price over the past couple of days. So maybe if there was a, a huge price dip in the last few days, that could be an explanation for that. So that basically the the, the price of bridge is an average over, also over the last seven days or something. Um, but I would definitely uh, get back to our developers and 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 see why that's the case and what's going on there. Because... Yeah, because I haven't I haven't seen a significant uh, decrease in price. There has been a steady decrease for Bridge, which was to be expected because of this its uh, deflationary uh, behavior. But, yeah, uh, it's been like the discrepancy has been getting really really bad. Like I said, it's been fifty percent for like the day now, and before it was like thirty to twenty, and it's just incredibly confusing to me as to why that's happening. So yeah, yeah. Thanks thanks for the thanks for the input. We're definitely going to look into that. You're welcome. Um, I, I sadly I don't have the answer for you right now, um, but there must be a reason, and we'll definitely figure it out and make sure that that um, that the price will be accurate again. All right, thank you very much. That's hey, all. If I might add something to this here, um, it's depending on the chain you're looking at the bridge. So if you're looking at the bridge on Binance Smart Chain, you will see the price of the bridge token on the Binance Smart Chain. And um, yeah, if you could look at CoinGecko, it's the average of all three chains. Oh, so if I so the cross chain bridge website that gets the, gets the info from CoinGecko because I've been no, cross chain the info from the um, chain that you're looking at. So if you I switch been, Polygon, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I've go been cross referencing cross chain bridge and pancakes, what both on Binance Smart Chain, and that's where the fifty percent discrepancy comes from. Let me because look, maybe I can see if there's any big, I mean, there isn't really that big of a discrepancy between the prices on like the different networks right now. So it's actually pretty even. So that actually probably shouldn't make that big of a difference at least. Um, yeah. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I have, um, I'll just name some numbers. Like I got about 70 bridge uh, as a reward pending right now. And that's almost um, 10 USD. So one bridge would be far above 10 cents, like 13 cents or somewhere in that realm. And if mm -hmm. I check pancake swap, it's about 7.4 cents. So yeah, like... but like that's that's what I mean. Like if you look at the last seven days, if I'm, I'm on a chart right now, 
And if you look in the last seven days, the price has been between like 1050 and now it's like about 750. So like if I take the average of that, it would be around somewhere between eight and nine. So um I'm actually yeah, but, but I'm between eight and nine between eight and nine, like thirteen cents, that's still a like yeah. a giant. That's almost twice the price, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I definitely gonna look into this. Um thanks for make giving me like making me aware of this. Um I don't have a specific answer for you right now why that is the case. But um it's probably going to be somewhere in the code, I guess. All right. But obviously, thank you very much. We, we make sure that that becomes accurate again. Thanks for your input. You got anything else? Or that, that's, that's all I got. Thank you very much for okay. your time. Cool. Um, do we have any other questions from the community right now? Um, if not, or do we have any questions that are in the. Um, in the chat, so if you guys want to go to the Bridge Insights chat, you can also post a question there if you don't want to speak on stage. Um, I see nothing here right now. We have a but we had a bunch um, of more questions um, that came up from the community. Uh, one of them was, "What are the benefits of staking Bridge?" Um, yeah, the benefits of staking Bridge are obviously um, that if you have if you deploy bridge for a longer time here um in the reward pools you're probably going to make a good return on investment on the um on the token you're staking especially for the tokens that have good volume um for example from from what i saw recently the pmon pool on uh, bsc has been doing pretty well um so yeah you basically have an opportunity to earn kind of like a passive income uh, without much risk there being for you so yeah it's a pretty cool like way to just um keep on earning over extended time periods um yeah first time staking what should i know i guess the biggest thing to know is that you have that you're going to have to pay the 30 percent withdrawal fee so make sure you um either stake long enough to kind of make up for that or like do your calculations correctly so um you don't lose money on that um other than that it's pretty simple just buy or earn some bridge and put them in the reward pools and um yeah see how it works um i just i just want to confirm if i harvest 100 tixel that's in reward pools i will have 100 tixel right so yeah, that's that's so the the there was a little bit of confusion there. Um, the the thirty thirty percent rule only applies to the bridge token itself. So whatever um, whatever rewards you're harvesting, there will be no deduction. Um, after how much time can I see how much I earned in reward pools? Um, I mean, as soon as basically the first bridging comes into a reward pool you should get your kind of share of those fees and so yeah it's basically the, the basically the first bridging after you um, staked you should be able to see your rewards coming in and um, what is the difference between farms and reward pools yeah so that's the basically the big one we already talked about the farms last week is um obviously the the farm work with liquidity supply to the bridge and you get the bridge token as the farm token as a reward, um, which means the way the farms work, you can get a kind of a steady return per block in the farms, while the reward pools basically only give out rewards that the bridge actually earn to bridging fees. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's the biggest difference here. Okay, so maybe I have one more. Many main has one more question here. Let me get you on stage. Many men, I send you an invite. You have to click on it if you want to come on stage. Okay. Seems like you don't want to come on stage, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, are there any other questions? Uh, anyone else that wants to come on stage? Anyone else that wants to write something in the chat? Oh, there's another one here now. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is there 
any way to make sure the community doesn't vote away the 30% penalty once the CCPA is decentralized into a DAO? Um, I guess no. Um, there isn't. But as I just explained, I mean, there's certainly, there can be a debate about um, is 30% too high, is 30% should it be lower? Um, there might be a discussion in the future of lowering a little bit. Uh, personally, as I said, I think there should always be some level of penalty fee because otherwise, as I just explained, whales will always just play around and basically get all the fees from the bridge, which isn't really nice for the average user. But there can definitely be a debate about the 30% penalty becoming a little bit lower than 30%. Um, in the long term, would you consider letting people stake bridge for a long time and earn rewards across multiple coins, including new coins that as they are added? Right now, we have to speculate on some very small cap coins and that's staking for USDC when we stake. And I think people will probably be willing to deposit more if they earn a share of all rewards. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by share of all rewards, because like basically 70% of all the rewards going to the bridge do get um, put into the reward pools right now. Um, yeah, right now we have a lot of smaller cap coins, so the rewards aren't that high i guess i mean it always depends on the kind of amount of bridge tokens um in that reward pool right um in some of them the rewards in percentage wise are actually pretty good um yeah i think the the more the adoption the bridge gets the more networks get added the more tokens get added the more um kind of the the idea of reward pools will crystallize out and and become a more profitable investment so um yeah it's i guess it's just gonna be a question of um further adoption to make that happen are you surprised that a single asset staking hasn't gotten more attention i mean i'm not really surprised because obviously the it's not like the single asset staking or like depending on what you're talking about right now here is if if you look at the farms, the farms are basically mostly full, so you couldn't really add anything, any new amounts of tokens there unless we increase the limits. And um, I guess the the reward pools themselves, they're kind of like they're basically an economic function of the bridge um, kind of amounts that get bridged. So um, there isn't really the as long as there's not a lot more. Um, volumes um it's not going to become more um like economically viable to add more stake to those pools so these pools will grow with the bridge growing so i guess the the amount of attention that these pools have is always about right because people will like keep on staking as long as they can make a profit and if they can't make a profit anymore they're probably not going to add new coins so I guess that always kind of balances out. Um, hey, all. A question related to reward pool, but concerns the wider business marketing plan for the CCP. Does Tix have any goals for total average daily transactions value across the CCP? I'm asking you know, if there's a marketing plan of clear goals for certain volumes daily that will influence the APR of the reward pools. I would imagine that attempting to market the CCP to achieve daily bridging volumes of over 100,000 or even 1 million should be possible. This will automatically affect the APR of the reward pools. We already have goals for total volume bridge daily, and if so, what are those goals? <clears throat> I mean, we don't have specific goals put in numbers for daily volumes. Obviously, it's you can kind of run the calculations of like which volumes which like would lead to kind of which amount of APRs or rewards with everything. And obviously our goal is always to increase um, the volume and obviously marketing and business development as well is focused around these kind of, um, yeah, achieving these kind of things. So um, yeah, we are striving to increase the, the volumes um, with every new asset we add, with every new network we will add in the future um making the bridge process smoother all of those things um and the more that becomes real the more there's a flywheel effect kind of on the bridge we have more liquidity more bridging more rewards all of that stuff can we expect some good news about ccp tomorrow um 
I guess so. I mean, the if you're talking about the founders AMA, that's obviously kind of their thing, what they're going to tell you. So I don't want to like spoil anything there. Um, but we have we have some really cool new ideas that we're working on. We're trying to push those forward. So I guess that's good news, yeah. Um, Hope is saying he wants us of creating specific goal volume goals may make the process of growing the CC be more attainable. I mean, I guess it's always good to have like specific goals, but. Um, I also feel like that that puts a lot of pressure on like specific numbers. And I mean, you know yourself, how communities in crypto um, sometimes are with like a specific number, then maybe that number doesn't get reached. So um, I feel like it's like making a specific number per daily transactions and saying like, oh, we want to reach that much uh, on that day. And maybe we reach it. And then the next day, the numbers go down again and we don't reach it. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're doing anything wrong. It just means maybe on that day there wasn't that much bridging going on. So um, we're definitely striving for those numbers, but um, yeah, I I like I don't really think it makes a difference to 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 say that specific volume. Um, the goal is obviously always always more volume and more adoption. Ibashi says he wants he wants me to spoil, but uh, yeah, I can't do that. But um, just look forward to tomorrow and um, I let Christian and Sebastian speak for themselves. Uh, timeline for having Eve, Medic and BNB on the bridge. I guess pretty short timeline. Um, we have kind of the basically technological. We are ready to, to add native assets. Um, right now, it's more mostly a thing in kind of having the right, right moment to do that. Um, but... Yeah, we definitely be adding. I can already say that we definitely be adding Ethereum first of these three assets because it's the most, um, it's the biggest one, the most adopted one of these three. Um, so yeah, definitely gonna go for Ethereum uh, first, and this should be on definitely on the short list at this point of getting it done. Any news on possible insurance on the bridge? Uh, I think we spoke about this two weeks ago. Um, no news that I, that would be worth telling so far. Um, I've def insurance is definitely going to be a topic in the new year, but uh, don't expect any more updates on insurance in the next two weeks. Um, but definitely something we will look into deeper and deeper in the new year and more adoption. <laughs> Native tokens versus projects such as Pimon, which do you think will be more profitable for you to focus on? Um, I mean, that's a really hard question because kind of, for example, for Pimon, our bridge is right now the only one that Pimon is using means like all the bridging volume from, from a project like Pimon comes to us, which means if, for example, Pimon grows, um, that can be very significant volumes. Um, while native tokens, there's obviously... Or native tokens or like also stable coins are a category where the entire market is a lot bigger, but there's also a lot more players in the market. So um I would say a mix of both, honestly. I think we, we shouldn't focus on either just the one or just the other, but um they're kind of two different things. Like one's more focused on maybe like marketing and getting new users, the other one's more focused on business development and getting new projects on board. I guess I was asking what the business plan and method is rather than any specific particular values, but that's helpful. It's just good that Tix is aiming to grow the CCB. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, 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 the business plan, as I just said, is always, or from my side, from the business development, is obviously getting new protocols on board, telling them our features, showing them what they can do with the bridge, showing them the DeFi um, kind of applications of the bridge, making protocols aware that we have the NFT bridging capability. So. Yeah, I guess that would be my answer to this right now. All right, that was it for the questions here. Anybody else has any more questions, wants to come on stage, wants to chat here? If not, this is probably going to be it for the day. Um, I thank all of you guys for your time and listening in. Uh, it was a cool experience.